Oh, all right. Looks like we're still gonna need this. This is keeping it together, which, yeah, man. I think we need to after this oh, episode. Good we're lord. Gonna turn into Jessica Jones by the time this show's done. Man, this was, uh. Woof. This is intense. <laughs> um. Uh, if I was a little kid, this would give me nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> like. Good, good, good job. We're always talking about how things aren't dark enough, like they were back when we were kids. Mm. Not on this show! <laughs> Well, I mean, th th that was like Isle of Dr. Moreau type shit going th on there. Things can get dark, but a lot of times they feel like they're dark for no reason. This definitely feels like it has a reason. It this, was this so feels justified. Yeah, this feels... It, it wasn't even like drawn that dark. It just, the subject matter was dark. Well, and the way um, it was presented and the way it was... I mean, e even when she starts to split apart there, I mean, that's... It's got some disturbing animation there. I mean, imagine your little kid just seeing one of your heroes just like her back is splitting up and her eyes open up and she's crying as all these hands are trying to grab. I mean, that's well, that's it was it was edited so beautifully and with the, the music two, with the two different sides of her talking. Like, yeah. no, this can't be. Oh, they're here all along. Oh, this is punishment for the rebellion. Is this what Rose thought was gonna happen? I'm like, surge. You know what I like too? As soon as they say, you know, I bet Ruby and Sapphire can help us fold. I'm like, well, okay, we're obviously gonna see Ruby and Sapphire, and we you didn't. didn't. <laughs> yeah. And this is one of the few times where it's like, I always think sort of the, the 10 minutes that they have for each episode are really tight and really good, a lot like Adventure Time. They, they know how to utilize the time. This was the one time I'm like, God, I wish there was more. I mean, it's, but in a good way. Like, you know, it's... And I always leave, I'd rather leave wanting more than yeah. going, eh, could have been I mean, shorter. it's like, you know, never separate the pair, haha, -ha, and they put them together. It's like, you know, okay, okay, good, but... Seriously, what the hell? <laughs> I really wanted more. Um, I mean, this is an episode. Peridot comes back, uh, or at least they find her. We don't know. Well, no, we do know what she was doing, apparently. She's combining the shards of destroyed gems, which is pretty much like dead people, uh, and putting them together, creating these, just these hands and feet and arms and... That was nightmarish. Yeah, it, it really was <laughs> You know what, it, what a testament to how well... You know, and it's a different type of world building because we've just been getting pieces at a time. But shards, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> what a testament to how well the show has basically gone about the world building and telling us what's important and why these things are important and how this universe works. That when she said, oh, these are the old gems, these are the shards, they've been buried, and they've been re-put back together, that I'm just like, unholy abomination! Yeah, it hits How you. How dare you! It legitimately you. hits you, where I think if you started off with this, you know, and said, oh, the gems are kind of like people, and these are shards, and now they're put together, oh, weird, yeah. ooh, like, but I mean, we've gotten to a point bitch. where it's like, <laughs> yeah, whoa, like, that's really messed yeah, up. Like, I, you get it. You, it, it sinks in. It's I got it. I'm like, this in. is, I'm like, this is Fucked up. Fucked up! <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I... You know what? I also like that this was a very... I've had a lot with Steven and Pearl. This uh, was... Garnet. Oh, um, no, we have had a lot. No, yes, we yes. have had a lot with Steven and Pearl. Listen, stop drinking. <laughs> I like Not that this, this was... episode! I like that this was very uh, Steven and uh, Garnet. Toasty, toasty. It's fishy, flashy. Um... Yeah, I like that this is about them kind of bonding and, and Steven seeing, you know, shit go down with Garnet and is worried about her. I, I just like the way the two interacted. I Steven always has moments with all three, and I like that. So this was definitely a Steven Garnet episode, whereas the other one we had Steven Pearl. And they each have a different dynamic. So they're like, I don't feel like these three characters are all the same. Yeah, and if feels you get like a bonding repeat. episode, you're just going <laughs> to see the same thing just with a different character so um well and this is one of the reasons i love you know this is why i loved x-men growing up i really like group environments because you're allowed batman's awesome and, and superman's awesome I, I love those characters but there's something about when you put them in a group and you can just see the interaction off each other you know bugs bunny is great but if you put bugs bunny with daffy duck and elmer fudd and these other characters you see how they work off each other and it's the same thing here i love when pearl and amethyst go 
chase after uh, Peridot. So, you know, they're still contributing. They're a part of the team. But, yeah, we Garnet lost her. and Steven... Her fingers were too yeah. fast. <laughs> but Garnet and Steven are going to go do their own thing, too. And they're going to have sort of an interesting connection. I think with group environments, you're constantly finding new connections and new stories and new relationships you can constantly build and grow. Well, and again, it's all about the metaphors for love, marriage identity yeah gender identity and an identity of any sort really. all of that i mean that's what's um, so great you don't have to be going through like you know you don't have to have like be going through a gender identity uh, crisis you don't have to be going through uh you don't have to be in a marriage with someone you don't have to be with anything like that it's just it's all it's subjective in just the right way um, I mean, I think we can both say we really, I really connected with that scene at the end where she's talking about what it's like to be Fuse, and especially, I, I always call my wife, I always say it's like, it, it's, I just feel like even though I've only known her for like eight years, it's like, she feels like she's my right arm. It just feels like that, like I've always known this person somehow. Yeah, I, the, the that's why I really is, like the idea of Fusion, it's like, I it's have just to remind so myself it. that it's a kid show. Because I thought initially when they were talking about it earlier in the episode, where it's like, well, it's two parts become greater than the whole or whatever. She was basically saying something like that. And I was like, well, what a wonderful metaphor for marriage or um, love. Um, yes, you can. Those two can be the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you have a lot of this. Put up on My wife's going to see this. I'm asleep on the couch. Um, <laughs> As opposed to? I... <laughs> Well played. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and the thing is, I got it. I didn't need any more explanation. I got everything about what it's like to be fusion from that one little speech. And then Garnet keeps talking at the end, and a part of me is just like, I didn't need this. I already got it, but I'm like, oh, that's right. I'm a grown-ass adult watching a cartoon <laughs> show. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, I get it because I'm an adult, but, you know what, spell it out for the kids, just in case. Well, I, I didn't um, even make the argument. And it was a well, it was a well-written speech. Yeah. So it was funny, though, because oh. I'm just like, I keep forgetting. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is meant for, like, kids. Like, so something that's subtle that I'm like, no, that was fine the way it was. It was subtle. Sometimes you need to spell out a little more, but it would, I thought it was a great ending. Well, so. I would even make the argument, like, even not for kids, because, I mean, it's definitely for kids, but there are people, I mean, all of us, uh, we've all seen people whose emotional development go slower, uh, you know, or they don't always catch on to certain social cues and stuff, and I think shows like this, again, I think this is why My Little Pony is so popular, is because it is talking about that social interaction, and it's talking about in a very slow, fair way that... Anyone can understand okay, that's it, fine, and you can grasp onto it. I think it was aimed at kids first. This is running on yes, Cartoon yes, Network, obviously. This is uh, not. But, but I'm saying that's why it's not it goes running beyond just prime a time on NBC or something. Like mm -hmm. it, it, it's aimed first, and if Rebecca Sugar wants to aim at a larger crowd, that's fine. But I, it's still, I think. No, it's a kid show first. Yeah, um, it's, it still it's has a the kid silly show jokes, first. Still, but the silly jokes so are you good can't and everything. Be, you can't be too subtle. Um, which is what I think happened, and I'm, I'm fine with that. I actually, I actually thought it was a great speech. I like to... There's a good moral in there about you can't force people to be something they're not, which is what the other gems or, or Dot or whatever they're doing. It's like, you know, Fusion, that was like Garnet's choice, those two coming together. And what's going on here, it's like forcing somebody, it's like praying away the gay or something. It's mm -hmm. like, you, you can't force somebody to be something they're not. You can't take these two things that aren't supposed yeah, to fit together. You can't together force together. people together. You can't force people apart. Like, it, it just, it's, it's gonna fucking happen. It's all right. <laughs> Deal with it, universe. Um, I also, Steven Universe. <laughs> I also like, you know, the two things that, uh, it's funny because, you know, this is mostly a Garnet episode. Uh, you know, and Steven's in it, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Steven's comedic moments in this, I thought, were really legitimately funny. Well, first of all, the way, if you watch the way he folds clothes, he they really animated him like he folds it like a little kid. So they're putting the head down and doing that and stuff. I, I didn't even I notice I love that. the way they animate him even constantly as a real little kid. Uh, totally and, and the way that. he talks and everything is... So genuine, but so the, so a little kid. The and scene they, though, where she asks, "Are the others here?" Yes, and that's the other scene I was going to point mm -hmm. out. One of the greatest moments in just this thinking, entire show and so far. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just was so, Whoa! 
It's so well animated. And, and you don't need that scene. You could have cut that. You didn't even really need to have Steven come across so her. Steven. It, does, it, just... it, doesn't, it doesn't add anything like crucial to the story, but it's just such a funny moment. <laughs> and no. Yeah. And it, it's just a funny, wonderful thing. It's almost like an apology. Character. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it might say something like you see in a Coen Brothers movie where it's like there's a lot of scenes where it's like, you don't need that, but it just adds so much character and so much comedy and so much awkwardness to, you know, a, a show that has so many badass scenes and so many things are well, planned out that it's great to have something that just makes them feel more human. Little touches like that make a show. Yeah. So it's the attention to detail. When I watch a really good anime or really good animated film, it's the little things that you didn't need to do. You wasted paper or progress or megabytes or whatever if it's a CGI movie. You wasted time, money, and effort doing that. And yet those little moments make it. Like, you didn't need it, you wasted the time doing it, and the film or the show is actually better for it. You know, I remember when, uh, slightly off top, but when I first saw Coraline, and I knew I was going to love this movie when there's a scene where she enters a room. Well, how do you animate someone entering a room? Turns the knob, opens up the door, comes in. But, you know... In good animation, with good characters, you see her hanging on the door, that leans her open, and then she lets go and she walks in. It just immediately gives her so much character, yeah. so much life, and she just feels alive. Uh, and I feel like this show and is And again, the thing constantly. I like most, visual storytelling, no dialogue. Yeah. Told you things you need to know about a character without a line. Uh, um, so, no, really yeah. good episode. Uh, very Oof. nicely done. Um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely nightmare fuel, so, um, sweet dreams. Oh, I'm not going to be able to unsee that. Don't worry, the couch is very comfy. <laughs>